Um, thank you, Rebecca, for having us here today and opening up Wide Sussex. It's a brilliant event to attend to. Um, so today, what we are going to talk to you about is um, how to invite an inclusive job advert to attract diverse candidates. Um, we'll tell you a little bit about COGA. We'll talk about some specific measures we've taken to foster diversity and also into the specifics of our recruitment process. Gavin's changed slightly from this purchase. <laughs> Um, but as Cynthia just mentioned, my name is Jodie Murgatroyd. I started about four months ago at COGAP um, after taking a five-year break. And Gavin? Uh, so I'm Gavin Mallory. I'm the production director at COGAP. And uh, along with uh, Louise and Jodie, we're the production team. So um, Louise, since her apologies, she couldn't be here. Um, and I'm sorry too, because she's great. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you'll, I'll do my best. Um, so a little bit about COGA. We were founded in 1985. We have an office in Brighton, we're in New England House, uh, with an outpost in New York. And um, a lot of the projects we tend to work on are large mission critical projects. And um, we specialize in museums, libraries, and archives. This is our current team. We're about 15 people at the moment, um, with most of them being in technical roles. And so the the business at COGAP is driven by five really important guiding principles that we refer to every week in our um, leadership meeting. So uh, the first one is innovation in digital media. The second is about creating outstanding long-term value for our client. The third, they're producing work that enriches the lives of people who use it. Um, then playing a useful part in our community and helping to enable the urgent changes needed to ensure a sustainable future. I, I am reading these, but I haven't got them like, tattooed <laughs> on my brain. And the final one there, fostering a prosperous working environment where everyone involved can thrive and do their best work. And they, these really, like, they are the principles that we, that we live by and the things that we decide what projects to do on. And that we, that it really feeds into um, our recruitment process as well as all of our, our other work. And so, um, diversity and inclusion is a thing, we, like, we're all here today because it's not where, where it should be. Um, so we've been giving this a lot of thought, um, or rather, the reason Joan, you haven't been assisting where, where possible. Um, and so uh, we wanted to come and talk to you a bit today about what we've been doing and ask for your help going forward. So um, with our, what, we, what we're trying to do with our adverts is that we are... And trying to represent ourselves well and, and honestly and truthfully. So we we try to be upfront and honest with our advertising and our recruitment. Um, we have a, a real authentic and genuine desire to diversify our team. Like that, that's a, it's important to us. Um, and we like working at Cogout. It's great. Mm -hmm. So um, we want to meet key, bright, interesting people that are different from us so we don't become too homogenous. So, let's delve deeper into what we have done, it says here. Um, so we've got an equality and diversity policy. We think you should have one too, and not just have one, but believe in it. Um, here is ours on our website, in the About section. Take a little look, um, and it's, we use it as a forum to, for people to discuss it with us. Um, it's a collaborative effort from the team. It's not just something that senior management put together. We all put our input into it. Um, and it's reviewed on a yearly basis. Sorry it, to interrupt you. Yes, it is reviewed on a yearly basis. Thank you, Devin. Um, we don't just have a policy that sits on our website. We've also got a diversity working group um, where we put our policy into action. About four years ago, that was set up. Um, so what is a diversity working group? It's something that anyone can join in. We have monthly meetings where we set a list of tasks and we try and work through them. Um, some things that we've done so far from the group is working with COBAR to get underrepresented people into programming. We set up a silent brainstorm, so people that are um, quite quieter members of the team, they get their chance to have their voice heard. We allow our staff to become mentors and encourage our staff to become mentors for people in underrepresented areas. Um, so hopefully we can get them to a stage where we can hire them. And um, we recently created a podcast where we talked to three of our developers about how they got into the industry and any hurdles that they may have overcome on the way. 
So let's talk in a bit more specifics about our actual recruitment process. So COGAP is, um, as you've seen, quite small. Um, and uh, people are our biggest asset. So um, our, um, our biggest outgoing by far is wages. Um, and so we really, uh, it's the people that make the agency and then therefore make the work. It's the same for all of you, I'm sure. So um, because we're small, and because people are so important, not having someone that isn't the right fit for whatever reason can be um, can be quite difficult, and can the impact can be really noticeable. So that makes us quite careful with our recruitment. But sometimes it doesn't work out, and we have um, allowed ourselves and encouraged ourselves actually to say maybe that's all right. I mean, if it doesn't work out, then we always support the, um, someone in finding the thing that is right for them. And this isn't right for them. And if, if it's not right for them and it's not right for us, then let's talk about that and let's try and resolve that in a way that works for everyone. So our recruitment process, this is what we used to do. This is the olden days ways. So we used to ask for degrees in an advert and that would be important. If you um, did an interview and then went to speak to um, someone about, what, some, uh, a colleague about how the interview had gone, often the first question would be what degree have they got and where did they get it? Um, we would ask for experience of working in an agency or in digital, and that would be for a producer or for a, a developer. Uh, for producers, we would ask for things like Prince2 qualifications, things that cost thousands of pounds to get. Um, we've all got them, but that's because COGAT paid for us to get them. Um, and people would think because of this, we got a bit of a reputation, people thinking that you needed to get a, um, a degree and a first to, to work at COGAT. And that stemmed from having, an, our leadership was very academic and um, was and is very clever. Um, but that, that um, I think that, that gave them a particular worldview and we saw, that, and that worldview then reflected itself in our um, recruitment and therefore in our, um, the diversity of our workforce. So we basically um, hired a lot of posh men with white faces and, and little beards. Now I'm two of those things, I'm not especially posh. Um, I should have shaved. Um, so this is what we do now. So now, rather than looking for degrees and so on, we, uh, we're looking for potential. So um, we, it's about five years ago we started this shift, but it, it's, um, it's really kicking in now. So we, we, we're looking for potential, not just qualifications and experience, but where you could be, where you could get to. Um, we, we let go of the need for degrees. And, that, and we've recognised that some of our most brilliant colleagues are actually self-taught. So um, Louise, came to us, it says here, uh, that this was what she was going to say, but um, that she pr proved her aptitude for hard work by running a pub. So there's, there's pub and there's a digital agency, but actually dealing with people a lot, lots of stuff going on, big responsibility, long hours, long hours come on, <laughs> um, like things going wrong, problems and having to solve them. There's a lot of transferable skills from that. Um, you were the next one. Yep, thanks. Um, and I used to work in the music industry, so when I applied for a job, job at COGAP, it was something that I'd never done before. I'd never worked in an agency. I'd never worked with developers before. And I think the way that we write our adverts makes people want to apply for that job. It makes you feel like you can do it, which I think is really important. And then a couple of other examples. So uh, Vicky, who's one of our developers, um, she ran a charity shop and worked in retail and is a self-taught programmer. And um, Neil was a journalist or studied journalism. And it says now he's just angry about politics on Twitter. I don't know if I was meant to read that out. Um, <laughs> and uh, another colleague, Kevin, was a maths teacher. So in the background wise, it's very diverse. It's not all people from a computer science background. And that is lovely, especially for us, because we're not techie. Um, so I think we we had that kind of moment of clarity for ourselves and then needed to express that properly in our advertising to enable us to um, attract the right people. So um, we adjusted our language, we changed the way that we talk about COGAP and brought it much more down to earth, less academic, much more approachable, much more friendly. And we 
mostly recruit for technical roles. So there, there are about 15 of us. About, there's three of us that are the production team. Pretty much everyone else is, um, is techie. And we do struggle to get diverse applicants. So what did we do? Well, uh, we put this bit that's kind of this, the top of the, uh, our job advert on our website. So the, the job description and stuff flows on under that. But the very first thing we put is that we particularly welcome applications from underrepresented groups in the tech industry. And that has really proven popular with our applicants of, and of uh, all shapes and sizes. So there's a number of benefits of having that. And um, it, it shouts that we, we are highlighting that, prior, we're prioritising diversity. And that says to you something about the place of, that we are and it, the people that you're going to be working with. And we found that that's been quite um, attractive to people. People have mentioned it in their interviews. And I guess um, it probably puts off all the bad guys. So also helpful. Um, and yeah, right. And so we, um, as a kind of another example of taking this seriously, we asked a, an HR consultant to come in, have a look at our job adverts, talk to us about our um, recruitment processes, our line management processes, and that helped steer our approach. So the things that we would recommend to do are think about the tone of your advert and make it friendly and approachable. There are some really cool online tools that you can um, uh, paste your advert into or any text into and look at how gendered it is. And so trying to doing those tests is really helpful. Um, we try to be open and friendly and um, do focus on people's potential rather than their qualification and be clear with yourself and with um, the, the potential recruit about benefits and flexibility. Be, um, I don't know about where you work, but where we work, there, there is flexibility, there is understanding. People have lives that aren't at work and trying to um, make sure people know that that's recognised and understood will help them want to come and work with you. So things to not do are um, using gendered language, uh, being all uh, pointy pointy or using stupid things like expert and wizard. That's not, that's not helpful. Um, and this, here's a really good example of um, gendered language. This is from the code bar Slack um, and they have a guys bot. Which is so if anyone says guys, Slackbot will automatically say, hey, we can you use inclusive language, don't say guys. Little things like that make a big difference. So you can very quickly and very easily add that to your own Slack, but also add it to your own brain. Um, <laughs> and we also uh, don't hide behind the company. It's, it's about people. People are your asset, right? So you want to get another person to be part of your crew. So it's the people that are going to sell it, not, I mean, yes, it's the company, yes, it's the work, yes, it's all that other stuff, but it's really the bit that's important to you and to the person joining is the people. So focus on that. So where do we advertise? We place our ads in wide Sussex, um, obviously. We put it on our website and our social media. And um, if we are looking for a junior developer role, we will put that on Codebar. If we're looking for a developer, we will put that on Drupal. And we also put it on our community Slack channels, such as Brighton Project Collective and Codebar. The one thing that we do as well, which I think really works for us, is we invite any applicants for a coffee or a call first. We think this is important because it helps us to break the ice and it sees if they're, in, if they're bright and keen from the start. So when I was applying recently, it was actually really good that I got to speak to Gavin and Louise because they were really friendly and it actually made me feel like this is somewhere I genuinely want to work. It's not just a job. Um, for both parties, this seems to work because it gives us a chance, it gave me a chance, sorry, to practice my sales pitch, especially after not applying for a job for such a long time. It really gave me that first kick um, without having to suit and boot and go to a formal interview. Um, and sometimes people that we invite for a call or, or meet for a coffee don't necessarily make it to the formal interview stage, but we will meet them anyway. Um, it's good to make that connection with someone because you never know, they might be not right now, but they could be further on down the line. Um, and why this works for us in particular is because it quickly allows us to identify if firstly they're a good candidate, it allows us to expand our network 
um, within the industry and also it limits the overhead so mm. informal interviews like we don't want to waste people's time and director's time and um, with having this kind of lengthy process um, it's important to set expectations with these calls um, or copies so we can either prepare them for an informal chat by saying they need to give a presentation or something like that um, ways that we still think that we need to improve so we could do more with mentoring what Louise who's not here today she is our only member at the moment who is on a mentoring scheme and um, more of us could probably do that we need to speak to more schools and colleges which we're in the process at the moment um, in getting younger people into doing jobs that we're doing um, and we can probably do more in terms of our flexibility or remote working we don't do anything like that everyone who's in our office is based in the office and that could be something that maybe that would help in the future um, so we really are excited about this and want to set up a wider diversity working group not something that we just sit up and talk about in our office we think this is a it's a brighton thing and an industry thing so if anyone wants to talk to us about maybe setting up a wider diversity working group then you can speak to us at some point today or send us an email um at diversitycogap.com and that is it i believe so thank you very much for